Happy Friday, everyone. Well, actually, it could be Thursday for some people. Just happy that you've joined me today. Um, very quick little cooking class, um, only because um, I was at the supermarket and I got inspired. And you, you know the old adage, uh, don't go shopping when you're hungry? Absolutely stands. 100% stands. Do not go shopping when you're hungry because chances are you'll put things into your basket that shouldn't necessarily be there. But also for me, don't go shopping when you're busy because as I'm walking through the market and I see stuff and I get inspired and then I would need to come home and cook and so my list of things to do goes completely out the window and that actually happened um, when I was at the supermarket and I found a sleeve of basil and there was a sleeve of basil and we all know basil, the fresh herb basil and it was sitting there and it was on special and it was calling my name and I had no choice but to buy it um, and then create something with it. And one of the things I love creating, especially when um, the herbs that, you're, that you've purchased may be just about to turn on you. So they're not as fresh, you know, and they're not as vibrant as they used to be. A really nice way to make sure that you don't waste your beautiful herbs, your flavorsome herbs, is to do something like what I'm about to do, which is to make an oil-free pesto. And the oil-free pesto is on page 26 of my cookbook, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Um, and you're probably wondering, for those of you who don't currently own a copy of the book and you haven't seen the recipe, you may be wondering how do you make pesto without oil? Because traditionally, oil is one of the foundations of um, a, a pesto recipe. And usually that, that what the oil they use is olive oil. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make an oil-free pesto. Um, it is really good if you are doing a gut reset or gut health program that we do, um, for a certain amount of time, we do take um, added fats and oils out of our diet, helps our gut to heal. Um, once you're in the maintenance phase, you can begin to add good fats back into your diet, but it is a really nice way to know that you can remove um, some of the added fats for a bit and still make sure you're not removing the flavor because that's one of the things, you know, that fat and oils, like really good oils, I'm talking about olive oil and avocado oil and coconut oil, they do have really, really good flavor and they do add that sort of, that um, unctuousness to a dish as well. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make my oil-free pesto using that sleeve of really sad basil that was all on its own in the supermarket and I just thought, oh, I've gotta grab it. How can you leave it there, right? How can you leave it there? It was unspecial. I love a bargain. That's probably one of the main things is that I love a bargain and it's really hard for me to turn down a bargain. So um, oil-free pesto, as I was saying, it is on page uh, 26 of the cookbook. It is literally the second recipe in the book in my foundation part of the cookbook. And the reason it is sitting there as the foundation is because it is one of those recipes that you can use in so many different ways. Like I like to mix it with fish. It works really, really well with fish. I also like to put it through vegetables once they're cooked, like zu cooked zucchini, and you put a couple of spoons of this oil-free pesto through it and you add so much wonderful flavors. But it also acts as a salad dressing. You know, you can put it on top of the fish before you cook it. You can put it on top of the fish after you cooked it. You know, there's just so many wonderful ways. You can also add this uh, pesto directly into or stir fry to give your beef or your lamb or your tofu or whatever it is a little bit more flavor so it's really simple to make and I'm gonna add a few little tricks into this um, pesto recipe as well for you guys so you've got even more options you know more um, variations on this very very simple idea now um, when it comes to that cookbook <laughs> you know that cookbook that I created it is a base and the biggest gift that I can give you guys is to use it as a base and then just to change things up a little bit whatever you've got available if you don't like basil you could swap it out for another herb you know for example there's another herb that you could use what's well, actually a, it's actually a lettuce but if you can't get hold of basil or it's expensive or it's out of season or you just don't like it you can still make this idea of an oil-free pesto but instead of using basil you could do something like this which is to use rocket or arugula as it's known um, in America so um, arugula is quite a spicy um, lettuce so spicy as in peppery not sort of chili so it's got a bit of a bit of a kick to it so it's actually really nice to add that rocket into um, a pesto or into a sauce just like this if basil is out of reach but for me today 
basil was totally in reach because you can sort of see that um, the basil that I got is looking a little bit sad. <laughs> I felt sorry for it. I couldn't leave it behind. So I was like, I'll take that. I'll do something lovely with it. So it's looking a bit sad. So it is a really good time to actually turn this a little bit sad looking basil, a little bit wilted, a little bit past its use by date or its best before date, I should say, but it's still going to make a wonderful sauce. So I'm going to bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing down here on my chopping board. Here we go. Fantastic. So in my little, um, glass bowls, what I have today is I have my little sad basil, my little sad basil's in there. Um, just the leaves as you can see I've taken the stalks off but in this bowl here I've actually got that rocket that I was talking about and um, I've got a little bit of parsley as well so in the recipe it's basil and parsley but as I was saying there is nothing stopping you from adding other types of herbs or in this case lettuce rocket is usually um, pretty well priced so you can make a really decent sauce out of rocket lettuce and what we're doing now is we're sort of we're because we're adding you know rocket here we're kind of moving away from the idea of it being a pesto and what we're actually essentially making is what is known as a salsa verde so salsa verde basically means green sauce. Salsa is sauce and verde is green. So you can add whatever, just think of it as a salsa verde. You can add whatever, you know, herbs. I like to go for the fresh bright ones like parsley and basil and obviously rocket with a little bit of pepperiness. Um, you could add mint in there as well. So those types of herbs work really well in a salsa verde. So um, very simply, I've got my two containers of greens. They are, everything is going to go basically straight into my favorite little food processor. So I'm just going to put the leaves in there, not the stalks. The stalks are just, you know, no one wants to eat a stalk. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe you do, but me personally, I'm not a stalk fan, so I'm going to avoid the stalks. But I am going to put in that bit of rocket in there, that bit of parsley in there goes in there as well crunch it all down you know it looks like you've got a lot but once it actually starts it starts to get the, the the processing happening you'll notice that you actually don't have that much so a good couple of handfuls of our green stuff goes in there first the next thing we want to do is we want to add a little bit of flavor so the flavor that we're going to be adding and also um, once again, this remember this recipe is a base. So the flavor that I'm going to be adding today is a little bit of garlic. I think in the recipe it says two cloves of garlic, but you can, there's nothing stopping you from adding more garlic if you like. Absolutely nothing stopping you. Because the only thing that's going to stop you is probably someone if you try and kiss them, if you add too much garlic. So <laughs> completely up to you. But there's nothing stopping you from adding, I'm just going to give it a bit of a squish with my knife, just a little bit of a squish, a little bit of a rough chop, garlic goes in there. Like I said, I've, I have two cloves in my recipe, but there is nothing stopping you from adding a third clove if you want. I shared a, um, a post today on Bridget's Kitchen and it was about um, growing your own garlic and how easy it is to grow your own garlic. Have a little look on Bridget's Kitchen, you'll see the post and it has the instructions on how to grow your own garlic in the actual um, post there. And one of the things that I'm reminded of is that homegrown garlic tastes completely different from the store-bought variety. So if you're using homegrown garlic, you might only go with one clove. I've added three cloves in there. Like I said, it's up to you. Remember, this: my recipes are a base. You develop them as you feel fit. So garlic's in there. The next thing we need to think about adding is a bit of lemon juice. Now the lemon juice is firstly going to give it a lovely acidic flavor, which is really important because we're wanting to balance out the flavors here. But the other thing that lemon is going to do is going to help to maintain the color of the greens. It doesn't go brown too quickly, which is important as well. So if you like it lemony, which is I definitely do, I'm actually going to start by adding some zest of the lemon in there first. So you can add that in there. You can, I mean, I've got two small lemons, but you could just have one large lemon. And it also depends, you know, how juicy your lemon is at the end of the day. So I've got this little handheld uh, microplane or grater, which is fantastic for zesting. Uh, I would suggest that you use one of these as opposed to slicing the um, skin off and then chopping it because it doesn't quite get it fine enough and you'll find that you get big chunks of lemon through your uh, pesto or your salsa verde which is 
it sometimes cannot be very pleasing. It can be a little bit like, oh, and there's the lemon, which you may not want. So um, definitely um, invest in one of these if you can, a little, a little grater, a little fine grater. I found this at the Salvos and it cost me a dollar. You can see it's retro, right? It is so retro, but it's the best thing in the world. This has traveled all around the world with me as well. Gotta have my, gotta have my grater or my zester. Okay, so that goes in first. That's gonna give us a lovely, a lovely punch of, of lemon, but because it's so fine, it's not gonna blow our heads off, which is really important. We also are gonna um, use the juice from the lemon. So into my little juicer. Another little retro find of mine that I've had for yonks. I don't even know if that's a word. I think that might be a Kiwi saying, yonks. Does anyone know whether that's a Kiwi saying? I've had it for yonks anyway, which means ages, <laughs> years. So the lemon goes in. Because my lemons are small, I am going to add two lemons to it. But if you've got a really big, fat, gorgeous, and by the way, this here, this rolling on the bench, of your lemon will help to give you more juice. I forgot to do that with the first one, but we're doing it with the second one. Already I can feel it's really softening up. It's wonderful. Lemons and lime, it's a really good little trick, is roll it on the bench first. And look, did you see the juice just came out of it because I rolled it? Let's see if we get more juice out of this guy. Oh yeah, look at that. That's jumping all over the place. I'm surprised I didn't, I didn't shoot the camera with that one. Oh. All right, lemon. I do like a bit of lemon, and you know what? The lemon works so well with all these flavors that we already have in there. They match, they are a match made in heaven, like literally. Lemon, basil, rocket, garlic, all those flavors just work so, so well together. So we've got our lemon juice, really important. The next thing we need to add is a tea towel. Not to the mix, just to my <laughs> cooking because my hands are sticky. All right, so we are also gonna add in a little bit of Himalayan salt. A bit of a sprinkle. The salt is going to once again balance. It's also going to help our palate to detect all the flavors because that's what salt actually does. Salt um, doesn't just make things salty. It's really good mineral that we totally 100% need in our body, but it also helps our palate to detect other flavors. So you know, it's really important that we do have that bit of salt in there. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper because I like pepper. You don't have to add pepper if you don't, don't want to. And the last thing that we're going to add, because remember this is an oil-free pesto, is we need to add a little bit of liquid and simply going to do that by adding some water. About 60 mils of water goes in there. I could add some more. I'm going to find out once I start to blend it up. So on into my little blender she goes. Big noise coming guys. Okay, let's have a little bit of a look. So right now, it doesn't much look like a sauce. It needs definitely more blending. Let's do that. Ooh, the smell though. The smell is fabulous. All right, now let's have a little bit more look. Oh, see the more we do, the more we actually start to look like a salsa verde. I don't think I have to add enough water. I, I'm add any more water. I like what's happening in there at the moment, but what I could probably add, but first I'll give my bench a bit of a wipe down, what I could probably add is just the rest of this basil that I've got sitting there. Might as well add it in, because do you see how much herbs we have and now we're just kind of left with a very reduced amount of sauce. Well, and I've just made another mess on the bench, gee. <laughs> right. Ooh. Coming out here. Okay, let's have a little look. This time I'm going to put it on my chopping board so I don't make a mess. Last thing to do, most importantly, is we need to have a little bit of a taste. What is going on down there? Oh yeah, there is such good flavor in here. It's punchy with lemon. It's got I can taste the rock, oh the rocket is fabulous. The rocket comes through really, really nice. I'm gonna add just another little pinch more of salt just to help, like I said, with that balance. Help with that balance. Give it a last little blast. And then one more little taste just to see what's happening. Oh, that's fantastic. This is so good and would be so amazing. Like I was saying, seafood, going through stir fries, salad dressings, anything like that. 
you now have used up that poor little sad basil and giving him a new lease of life. So there you go folks. Thank you for joining me today. Remember that that recipe is on page 26 of the book. I did adjust it ever so slightly, gave you a few more options, but thank you for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed this quick little class and we look forward to seeing you again soon. In fact, I think I might be doing another cooking class tomorrow. Watch this space, I'll announce that um, on Facebook very, very soon. All right guys, take care, bye.